Hello. Welcome to part two of my series on toxins. I hope that you have watched part one where I discuss contaminants and tap water. Today I'm going to be discussing contaminants in food and then um, bath products and cosmetics. So again, please use the link um, if you're on Instagram, the website link in my profile. On Facebook, the website link in my profile. Um, if you're on YouTube, um, the link in the description box so that way you can go and see under the helpful websites in my, on my webpage there, the resources that I'm using for this. So please, you know, please look them up and, and um, use those resources for yourself. Again, I am relying a lot on the Environmental Working Group. A great, great website. I cannot recommend it enough. I have no connection to the Environmental Working Group. You know, I don't, so I'm not um, referring you there because somehow I'm connected to them. I'm not at all. It's a, it's a separate entity for me. It has fantastic information. So today, I'm talking about food. Um, to start off with, which means we're going to look at the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. The Environmental Working Group um, goes on and what they do is they uh, actually test. They go and they test um, fruits and vegetables for toxins. And then the Dirty Dozen are the ones that actually have toxins inside of them. So even if you wash it, you're not getting rid of it. Whereas the Clean 15, you can wash it off. Um, or it's something that you have to peel and it hasn't gone into the inside. So with the Dirty Dozen, the recommendation really is you do not eat them unless you can buy them organic, in the organic form. So you need to eat them only if um, you can find them or, you know, if they are organic. The Dirty Dozen, you can eat from conventional without it being um, sourced organically. So the Dirty Dozen are strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. The Clean 15 are avocados, sweet corn, which actually kind of surprises me, but that's great. Um, especially up here in Iowa where, you know, you can get a lot of it. Pineapple, onion, papaya, frozen sweet peas. So I'm not sure why it says frozen. I guess they checked frozen. Um, so frozen sweet peas, eggplant, asparagus, cauliflower, cantaloupe, broccoli, mushroom, cabbage, honeydew melon, and kiwi. So that's really very nice to know. Um, and they also have on here, keep in mind the majority of soy, corn, canola, and sugar beets are genetically modified foods. Um, a small amount of salmon, papaya, and summer squash sold in the U.S. is produced from genetically modified organisms as well. So buy organic varieties to avoid GMOs. So I do try to avoid GMOs, um, the genetically modified organism. So I highly recommend that you avoid GMOs as well. So again, feel free to go onto my website. You can find um, a copy of the Dirty Dozen and Clean 15, download it, print it off, and use it when you go to the store. Another way, of course, if you don't you know, want to pay the price, um, the price increase for organic produce, is you can try growing your own. Um, this is our first year in this house that we're living in here of having a, a fairly large garden, um, but we do have the space for that. However, if you don't have the space, you live in an apartment, you can use pots and there's, you can grow tomatoes, you can grow strawberries, you can use pots, you can actually grow beans because you can trellis them. 
So there's a lot of things that you can actually just grow on your patio. Um, if you have a patio for your apartment or if you have an apartment that has really you know, some nice, you don't have a patio, but you have a window that faces south or west where you get a lot of good light. So that's always another option. Now we are moving on to toxic bath chemicals. So, um, phthalates, that starts with a PH, so it's an odd word, but it's pronounced phthalates. Unfortunately, they have been, they are just being used in everything. Um, they really are something that you want to avoid and you're going to find them in a lot of bath products and cosmetics. You'll hear me mention that in the cosmetics as well. Um, unfortunately, products don't list what is all in their fragrance. So they may have a fragrance, but they don't tell you what's all in it. So even if you don't see phthalates, but they list fragrance and they don't tell you what's in the fragrance, it could possibly be found in that can be found in nail products, deodorants, fragrances, hairspray, soap, shampoo, lotion, makeup. The, the reason why they use it is it helps the cosmetics to penetrate the skin, it helps prevent chipping and nail polish, it is a fixative for fragrances, and it's an emulsifier. However, it's a hormone disruptor. It can cause cancer and birth defects, testicular atrophy, structural defects of the penis, reduced sperm count, and laboratory animals. Um, probable human carcinogen, reasonably anticipated human carcinogen. And in Europe, um, it's classified as a mutagen causing genetic damage. So instead, look for DBP-free DBP nail polish, cosmetics, perfume, or cologne scented with plant derivative essential oils. So look for things that are scented with essential oils and then you'll know for sure the fragrance isn't causing a problem. Triclosan scores a seven on EWG's uh, scale for, for, so the higher the number, the more poor quality it is and the more dangerous it is. It's found in liquid, liquid soap, bar soap, deodorant, face wash, toothpaste, mouthwash, acne treatments. It's an antibacterial and it's a registered pesticide. We don't actually want to be consuming that. It is a hormone disruptor. It can disrupt thyroid, estrogen, and androgen hormones. Um, it reacts with chlorine and tap water to create chloroform, which is a probable human carcinogen. So if you have it in your toothpaste and you have put water on your toothpaste, it's going to react with the chlorine and the tap water. It can cause allergies in children, and overuse of it is causing antibacterial resistance, which is a problem if you get sick and you need an antibiotic. It is restricted in Canada and Japan. So instead, just use Castile soap or mild soap and warm water instead of these antibacterial soaps. Um, look for a toothpaste, you know, at maybe your local natural grocers. Um, that is fluoride free and also does not have any phthalates or triclosan in it. So just look, you know, read the ingredients. Read the ingredients. The next one is BHA, butylated hydroxy anisole. So BHA, you're going to find it in makeup, moisturizers, and food products. It's used as a preservative, so that's where you'd be looking for it, under the, under the preservatives. It is strong evidence as an endocrine disruptor from the European Commission on Endocrine Disruption, reasonably anticipated human carcinogen, and it's banned in Europe, but not here in the United States. So, for preservatives, that you'll look for things that have the fewest preservatives in it. You can use the Safe Shoppers Bible created by David Steinman and Samuel Epstein. So you can use things that use grapefruit seed extract, sorbic acid, potassium sorbate, vitamin A, vitamin C, tocopherol instead. Formaldehyde. You're like, well, why would I use formaldehyde? Well, the problem is, is it's used in things that you don't realize. So um, it's shown up as formaldehyde, form formalin, occurs as an impurity in Bronopol, D, 
DMD, Pydantoin, Quaternium 15, and some other products. So it will be found in eye cosmetics, nail care, shower gel, shampoo, conditioner, liquid soap, bubble bath, baby wipes. It's used as a preservative, a biocide, and a nail hardener. It is known as a human carcinogen, and it's an irritant to the eyes, nose, throat, and skin. It's banned in Japan and Sweden. So again, look for the words formaldehyde, formalin, bronopol, DMD, hydointin, and I might be mispronouncing that. So, quaternium 15. Then finally, parabens. Butyl paraben, methyl paraben, propyparaben. So look for all the parabens. Thousands of products, including lotion, moisturizers, makeup, anti-aging products, used as a preservative. Known as a hormone disruptor, parabens act like estrogen, thus they raise the risk for certain cancers, impaired fertility, and altered development of a fetus or young child, found in cancerous breast tumors, banned in Denmark, in cosmetic products for children, and in cosmetic products for children under three years. So, I have gone over my 10 minute time, but just wanted to get through that whole list of the toxic bath products to avoid. Again, go to the environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org. Go to my website, download some of these resources. Take care.